Yesterday, I got a question from one of my students on Udemy about how to parse a JSON that the property names have a special character. If you work with SharePoint, especially with the SharePoint get item from Power Automate, uh, probably you have noticed that some of the properties, they have a forward slash as a part of the property name. Of course, if you want to deal with that visually, that's easy because Power Automate will take care of everything. But if you really want to write an expression to get that value, uh, then that might be a little bit of a challenge. So let's see how we can deal with that. It's going to be a very short video. So let's get into it as soon as possible. If you thought this is a joke, it was not. So basically, I want to use literally the same JSON and extract this value referring to this field. Let's start with this, and then I will show you how it appears when it comes to SharePoint. So let me just pick up this one. So let's go to flow.microsoft.com, and I click on Create. I want to create an instant flow, and I want to call it, this is special. Manually trigger a flow, and I click on Create. My flow is created. So first of all, let's create an object and put this value inside it. Let me copy this, and I click on the flow, new step, and I create a variable. Initialize variable, and the name is going to be special. Type is going to be an object, and I can simply copy and paste that JSON object here. And this is a valid syntax. So if I click on Save, it comfortably accepts it. So now we want to read these properties. First, let's start by reading property one, and then we go back to this weird thingy. To read property one, it's very simple. Let me add a new step here. And I want to use, for example, a Compose. I click on Compose, and Compose is created. So I can click here, and I need to read this variable from here, which is called special, and bring it here. So to do that, it's very simple. I can click on the input. I click on expression, and I start by using variables. I need to bring in the variable name, and the variable name, if you remember from the previous one, it was special. Okay. So let me click on this just to verify that the name of this variable is correct. Okay, so variables special is correct. To refer to this property, which is the first property, I can simply say dot property one. If I click on update, now I can save it and run it. So I'll perform the trigger action, run flow. Let's see what we got in this compose. So if I come here, I have this lorem ipsum, which is the value that actually represents property one. Fantastic. But how about the second one? Can we follow the same approach for this one? Let me click on edit here, click on variables, and instead of property one, I can simply paste this property that I cannot even read it. Let me click on update, and it doesn't accept it. It says expression is invalid. Now, how can we handle this one? First of all, this is not a question for JavaScript developers. They already know how to handle it. For us that we might be a little bit new to this, we need to replace that dot something with square bracket, put single quotes inside it, and then refer to the property by whatever that is called, and this is how it is called now. Great. So let me click on Update. Let's see if it accepts it this time. Happy. And I click on Save. Let's test it this time and see if we can read this. So test, run, flow, and done. Compose. And I should have put this in a variable here, which I put it in Compose. You can use exactly the same syntax and put it in a variable. Now, let's see how it happens in real life and why I got here. Let me click on Edit again. To show you that, I need to go to SharePoint. Inside SharePoint, I have a list with a few items that 
it also has the ID. So I go back to Power Automate right after this initialize variable that I really don't need this anymore. I can click on this and I can say add an action and I go under SharePoint. So click on SharePoint and I look for get item. I'm looking for one single item. So I click on get item and site address. It's going to be Power Automate Workshop. List name is going to be product list demo. I guess that's the one products list demo, correct? And the ID that I'm looking for, for example, let's look for ID one. Let me make sure the ID one exists. Yes, it's a laptop. And I just read this. So basically what this get item returns would be some JSON stuff. So inside this compose, I can remove this variable because I don't need that anymore. I can go to get item and from the get item, I have body that actually this is the whole thing that this get item returns. Let me just save it now, test it again, and I will show you what you will find inside this body. So this is actually a real life example of how this trick can help you. So I click on continue, run flow, done. So inside this compose, try to extract the O data type here. Let's give it a shot. So let me get all these values, copy it somewhere that I can have reference to. I don't need this one anymore. I click on beautify, which is good. So actually I have a copy of it now. Now if I go back inside Power Automate and I click on edit, odata.type from here. So I should be able to read this value and bring it into another variable or another compose. So let's see how we do that. So actually, so at the moment we have a reference to the entire body that the get item returns. So I go to Power Automate and I click on new step. And I want to create a variable and I need to initialize variable the variable name is going to be the name of this thingy. I call it OData type. It can be anything. I just want to make it reasonably good looking. OData underscore type, for example. Type is going to be string. And here I need to write the expression that can read, for God's sake, where is it? This at sign OData type. So we start with the output from the previous one, God's sake. Okay, here. Click. I need to get the output from this Compose. Just like before, Compose Output. If I click on this one, it just gives me the visual representation. I don't need that one. To get the formula or the expression form of it, there is one way to refer to this action by the action name. The second and the easier way is click on the expression, just type a space, so it assumes that you're writing an expression, then click on dynamic content. And this time I want to get the output from Compose. When you do that, because there was a space there, Power Automate assumes that you want to write expression. So it gives you the expression form of it, not the visual. After you tricked Power Automate Designer successfully, you just remove that space and you're good to go. I click on the expression tab to continue. Next thing that I want to add here is author because your desired node is under author. So I just copy this author from here. Go back to flow. Dot author. So far it is good. But right after that, there is a special character. I cannot simply copy and paste it here after a dot. So if I put dot here and paste it here uh, because it assumes that at sign o data is one node and under that it has a type so again we use the same trick we remove this dot replace it by square bracket and we go to the end and i add another square bracket but before i press ok you need to enclose this in single code because it should be string representation of that property. Now I click on OK. Everything is good. Let me just save it. Test it. Test. 
run flow, done. And now if I come back here, I should be able to have this all data content in this variable, which is exactly what you have here. And that was all about it. Thank you for watching.